Hello friends, and welcome to episode 66 of From the Van! It's a podcast from my van! Where I have conversations with people who have relationships with residential vehicles. I'm your host, Marty Benson, and today's episode features Allie Rose. Allie is from Colorado, used to live in Encinitas, moved back to Colorado, and then moved into a van this year. She's back in Encinitas, I met her in the parking lot. She was loading this giant uh, stand-up paddle board up under the bed in her van. I'm super jealous of that open format. I can't fit a longboard in here, so I can only surf when the when the waves are waist high or bigger. Uh, she, her van is super cool. It's been in the shop. We didn't record her podcast in her van. We will do that the next time she's on the podcast, somewhere out on the road. Uh, but I'm happy to tell you that she just got it back today. So uh, Chooch is back in business. Something was wrong with the, with the van's computer, but she is all well and ready to roll. I had a great conversation with Allie outside, just up above Swami's in Encinitas. And uh, I hope that you enjoy it too. Please, have a good time with episode 66 of From the Van, featuring Allie Rose. What's going on, dude? Nothing. Yeah? Sitting here with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome back to Encinitas. Thank you. I love it. It's um, my home. Second home. Why are you here? I'm here because I love it. Yeah? Yeah. Surfing, beach, friends. It's paradise. But you've been living in Colorado. I've been living in Colorado, yep, for the last five or six years, mm -hmm. Fort Collins. It was all right. It's an in-between place, I feel like. In between temporally or geographically? Uh, I don't know. Just like a, it's not good or bad, it's just kind of there. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. I've been to Fort Collins and the thing that came to mind when you said in between is it's not Boulder or Denver. No. Right? Yeah. It's not in the mountains. It's not quite deserty, but it's kind of just there. Yeah. The only thing there really is the is horse tooth horse tooth reservoir. Yeah. Which is fun, but other than that, yeah. It's like a bunch of families and I don't know. It's just not really my not really my vibe. Well, why are you there? What drew you there? Oh, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we here. There are two rules about this podcast. Okay. Uh, we don't talk about anything you don't want to talk about. Okay. And the other one is, if you say something racist, I get to edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two rules. Um, All right. Cool. Fine. Good. So uh, I'll talk about really. I'll talk about anything. I okay. Don't care. Yeah. Um. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're gonna gloss over that. Tell me, tell me about your van. Okay, so my van is awesome. I love it. I went with more of like a mid-grade versus one of the expensive ones. Sure. And I was super happy because I was searching for it and I went on Craigslist and I found this van that was perfect because I wanted a rooftop deck and I wanted it really simple. Mm -hmm. And there was this one for sale for like 22 grand. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yes, I need this. And I called the guy or whatever, I drove it. And so that's how I met Palmer who now owns his own company with his buddies. There's like four guys that work there. It's called Flippin' Vans, and they're based out of Denver. Cool. And they built my van for me. Right, so and it, it came myself. just empty with a deck on top So when you okay, it? So I found the van because yeah. I wanted an all-wheel drive. And so it's a Chevy Express 1500 all-wheel drive. And so I brought that empty to them, basically. Mm -hmm. And then they let me kind of design it and customize it. Cool. And then they built everything out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what's in it then? So it has typical like solar, connects to the battery, the inverter. So it's got two plugs and then two USB ports and all the lighting. And then it's just got like white shiplap and just a little bed that's stationary. And then a cooler that pulls out and running water. Cool. And that's it. Are you on a goal zero? Is that right? Goal zero. No. What, what's your rented, battery? Rented, mm -mm, I don't know what the battery is. <laughs> okay. Those guys did it for you. They did it, yeah. yeah. But the solar system, like everything, is Renogy. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure. That's what I got. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Yeah. You just have a little app on your phone and uh -huh. it tells you your battery life and right. all the good things. Works yeah. great. Yeah. I love it. It's been great. That's also a mid grade thing. 
Like you can go more is expensive it? than that, but okay. as far as I can tell, they work great and they're located in Ontario, California. Oh, really? So if you're living down here and something goes wrong, like I've actually been there see? to like go to see one of the techs and been like, did I hook you this up check. right? Is this going to blow my van <laughs> yeah. up when I did my first van? And they were like, yeah, it looks you about right. this out for me. They're like, leave us alone. We don't want the liability of telling you that you did it correctly. You I know? know. You're like, just under the table. Yeah. Nobody needs to know what you said. Um, <laughs> cool. But so uh, not to twist the knife or anything, but twist it. Um, one of the things that I'm trying lately is doing uh, doing the podcast in other people's vans mm -hmm. but we couldn't do that right now I know because you don't have yours I know I'm actually so sad I wanted to do it in there yeah Absolutely. well we will but we will on the road eventually I know I was actually gonna say do you want to just wait we can meet on the road somewhere no I want to do another <laughs> episode another okay. time all right and let's do yeah, it yeah revisiting people is super fun I think yeah for sure yeah. I know that would be fun yeah I know but vans in the shop stupid i've already had to fix it twice mm -hmm. but that's just part of the game everybody that i talk to is like oh yeah makes sense yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that's just part of it i've actually yeah, had yeah, anxiety but... with your story i was thinking about this last night is like uh one of the coolest things is that you used to live in encinitas mm -hmm. and so you've got like homies that you can sort of rely on and stuff uh yeah, yeah. i feel so grateful so my van so it wouldn't start and I was hoping it would just be the starter mm -hmm. or the, um, what's the other one that's the starter or there's a, the alternator, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, it was the computer system, which is annoying. And right. the people I took it to, it's like been a whole thing, but they've had, they'll have had it for like a week. Uh -huh. right? And what's awesome is that I'm staying at my old apartment that I used to live in in Encinitas that my buddy moved into after we left. And he's out of town traveling, doing the same shit. And so, right. yeah, it's been great. And I have good friends here. And I feel like this is like second home to me. So yeah, it's been fun. Like awesome. I could complain and be upset about it, but really I'm just stuck in paradise. So I'm right. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I see myself like breaking down out in, uh, out in some like rural area where they don't like hippies. You know what I mean? I and just being stuck there for like a week and a half paying to stay in some hotel you, where you don't want to like turn a black light off you know? i know totally yeah. i know but did i tell you about the my mom was staying at the days in no did i mentioned that so my mom I don't think came, so my mom came out to visit everybody has come out i think i've told you this my sister oh yeah 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 out, you did say that you had visitors. family came out and then my mom came out and she was like yeah i just booked the days in cause it's like 70 bucks a night i don't want to pay blah 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 i was like all right that's fine and little did we know they house that they rent that out to the homeless people yeah <laughs> so needless to say it's a little bit sketchy and i showed up and i was like mom i'm sorry but this place is fucking this is disgusting uh -huh. and we were walking around on the floor bare feet which is like i would never suggest doing that yeah right and like one spot of the floor was wet with god knows Ooh. What. yeah god knows what and anyway we had to stay there at night and then luckily Uncle Scotty's place, what we call him. He brought us over there, so she stayed there with me. But days in, it's interesting. It's interesting yeah. Place. I would not want to get stuck there, but to your point, like if you break down in the middle of nowhere, it's like your van's gone for a week, what do you do? You find the cheapest hotel to right. stay at, and yeah. then it's a shit hole, so. Yeah. <laughs> Let's let these guys go real quick. All right. <laughs> a lot of people try to build into those things. Those things are super powerful. Yeah, I know. I've seen that. Have you seen the school bus that's around here? The purple one? Oh, yeah. That, part, that purple like, school bus has been around a lot. Yeah. And they're like they gutsy. In, they were parked in the bank parking lot overnight. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I wonder, I guess, that that's fine? Like, how are they not getting tickets? I don't know, dude. At certain it's points. Just, crazy. Well, you're not going to get a ticket on private property. You're just going to get towed right <laughs> that's true that's a different sort of deal yeah, you got private true. security and private towing companies messing with you if you're on private property but yeah. i don't know maybe they got some sort of whammy i know i know of uh, a couple of people that um that stay on private property because they have an understanding with the property owner but yeah. something tells me that purple purple bus is not mm -hmm. 
I think they're just sort of rolling the dice on a daily basis. I think so. I don't ever see anybody in there, though. Me either. And there's, like, never any curtains on the windows or anything. Right. You can see right in. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know what the deal is, but they're not—it's not moving itself. I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, know. I would love to get to the point where I am popular enough that I could be like out on the road in my van, and people would just come and visit me. You know what I mean? Yes. Like you've got—that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, who doesn't want to come to California? Who knows? If I was in a <laughs> if I was anywhere else, they'd be like, yeah, I'll catch you later. Yeah, yeah, Just come see me know. in Mobile. Yeah, <laughs> let me know when you're back in Encinitas, I'll come out again. Right. No, I know, I feel so grateful. I love my family so much. They're always, we're always, like, going to visit each other, and my mom's still, uh, like, yeah. She was like, where are you going next? I'll come meet you. I'm going to be in Santa Cruz at the end of the month if you want me to come down. Epic. Like, okay, thanks, Mom. Uh, so when does the van when does the van happen? How long have you had it? So I got it in March of this year. Yeah. Okay. So Just I a couple left months. In, yeah, I left in March basically. Right. Did you yeah. come straight here? Did you go see some stuff? I saw some things. Yeah, yeah I went to Moab. I met some buddies there. Nice. Um, and I've been there a ton, but I explore. I got to explore some other places, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I went up Onion Creek. Have you ever driven up there? No, I've never been to Moab at all. You haven't? Mm -mm. Oh my god! What? That's a wintertime thing for me, I think. You need to go. Are you kidding I know me? I need to go. Moab is like one of the most beautiful places ever. I hear that. I've never been to Sedona either. I mean, I'll give you plenty of fodder to bully me over if you want. <laughs> okay, let's do it. All right. Well, Sedona, yes, that's another story, but Moab is amazing. You need yeah. to go. Go up Onion Creek. You'll see Blue Mountains. Yeah. Incredible from like, the, I don't even know how it's made, but um, whatever chemicals are produced there from mm -hmm. there. It makes blue, the mountains are blue. Crazy. It's beautiful. I've There's never like seen this, that. No, me either. There's this little river that runs through and then like half the mountains are red and half the mountains are blue. Crazy. It's so cool, like a slate gray blue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I went there and then I did, what else did I do? I went to some sand dunes. I went to, I don't know, I can't remember right now. <laughs> That's okay. I don't know what I did yesterday. I don't yeah, I forget. That's what Instagram's for, right? You gotta go back and right, exactly. see it, look exactly. at your pictures. Like, where did I go? Uh, little secret. What is it? The only reason I record these conversations is so that I can remember what I did. See? I just, I actually do. I think sometimes about like when I'm like an old ass man. I know. Just like putting these tapes them. on and like listening to them and shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the best. Yeah. So, um, how long are you here for? I mean, pending the. Well. Suppose the van was done. Like, well, what's your what's your program now? I don't know. Yeah. I well, like I was just telling you, we'll see what happens. I've already been here for like two months. I feel like. By the time I leave, it'll have been two months already. Yeah. And then we'll see. I might rent a space, start a little business. Right, you're a hairstylist. Yeah, I'm a hairstylist. I've been, that's been my whole career. I quit doing that last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but this space just came available and my best friend lives out here. And so we might, we might go in on it together. So that's pending. Hell yeah. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. That's the whole kind of point about like van life and living on the road and just like being free to do whatever you want to do is, and that's kind of how I've looked at it is like I just want to stay open to whatever possibilities come my way sure I don't really have a plan I don't have anywhere that I need to be whatever so mm -hmm. if I feel like I want to do something I'm going to do it so I don't know good to be right. to be continued maybe that's episode two yeah Let's see where we're at in a couple months we'll catch up with you when you're like uh doing something somewhere else mm -hmm. or still here <laughs> L living in your van and running a yeah. running a hair salon so i've moved to the parking lot behind the salon it's been great <laughs> uh well let's talk about that actually where do uh without giving any go? no without giving any specific uh locations away or anything but like mm -hmm. uh just sort of thematically how do you park where do you park have you been parking in the street have you been parking like as as yep. you travel, but then also here, because I know, you know, San Diego County is notoriously overrun with van lifers. I know. And as such, because it's such time. an attractive place, uh, they're pretty restrictive in terms of like where you can actually spend the night and stuff. Yeah. What have you been doing? Honestly, I feel like it's been pretty easy for me. I just kind of park in the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. like in Snitas and Lake. Well, should I not say the location? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> 
Those are just those are just those neighborhood are just names. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Encinitas, Lucadia, Cardiff, um, friends' houses. That's kind of it. And then when I'm like actually on the road, I like to camp like away from yeah. people. So I'll do I'll just boondock it. And there's mm-hmm. some apps out there. The dirt is good. Um, I haven't used the dirt. You, you like it? I love I it. I use iOverlander. I was, that's what I was going to say next. Yeah. Yeah. I like the dirt. Really? I don't know why. I like it better. I need to try that one. I feel like it's easy to see. It's easier to see like all the pictures and okay. where everything's at. Cool. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I use those and those have worked out great. Or I'll just do satellite. I'm sure you do that. Or people, you do that. I don't know if you do this. But you mean like the I Google just, Street View mm-hmm. sort of thing? Yeah. yeah oh yeah. I do that satellite. constantly. Yeah. And find dirt roads or whatever. Yeah. I, do, I, I, I use that in uh, cities too. To find because my van looks oh, like a work truck. Yeah. I I can use that to sort of find industrial areas that also have parallel parking. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That works. I know. I haven't had any problems with it, but my best friend and her man, they've gotten kicked off already like three times. Is this the couple that's people. in Louisiana mm-hmm. right now? Yeah. 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 They, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they just maybe don't really care or something, but they just, they've gotten kicked off of private property that they thought was BLM land uh, like three times. Yeah. I'm like, you guys just use the app. Interesting. It's easy. But they, have you heard of uh, Harvest something Harvest? Harvest Host? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're on that too, so. Okay. I'd be curious to see what people say about that. The reason I haven't even really looked into Harvest Host much is because I think you have to have a toilet in your van. Oh, really? To stay. Yeah, I think Actually, you need to yeah, be a fully sense. self-contained yeah. RV or whatever. And I don't have a crapper in my van. They don't, they don't want people just digging holes and pooping everywhere. On Probably van. not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we run a winery, but it's fine to shit in the ground right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah that yeah. seems like a cool a cool deal, yeah. the Harvest Host thing, if, you, if you're set up for it. But. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't take advantage of it either. Yeah. Um, so why, why the van then? Why, what, what drove you into the van? What, what made you decide to, <laughs> drove me to get the van. the van? Um, well, I did a road trip last summer and in my car, mm-hmm. slept in my car. I really loved it. What was that? What, 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 what car? car? Just to give context for what yeah, you're living in. Yeah, it was in. a RAV4. Okay. So it's it a good sleeping vehicle. Nothing tiny, like, yeah. But for me, it was. It's got cargo space in the back. You can lay out. Yeah. Yeah. Just laid the seats down. I had, it was perfect. My little cooler, all my things. And then my bed was like just right on one side. And it was great. And I slept outside when I could. Mm hmm. And I loved it. I was so happy, especially with the state of the world, you know, the last year or so. I just needed to get out. And I was just recently out of a relationship. So mm-hmm. it was like perfect timing for me to just go. And I loved it. I was so happy. Yeah. The whole time I was just like, oh just like so grateful thankful every day smile like just loved it and then that's when I was like I think I'm gonna I think I want to do the van Uh like I don't really know where I want to live I don't really want to be in Colorado anymore I know I love California maybe I'll move back out there Mm -hmm. but I just wasn't sure so the van felt like the best option because I could pay out right for it yeah I had no overhead like no monthly bills besides you know a couple minimal like phone and stuff and um yeah, I don't know. Forgot I lost my train of thought. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, well, where 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 did you go in the Rav Four? How big was that trip? It was so fun. I went to so I had never been to like Zion, and Bryce, and mm-hmm. that whole area. So I explored all of that, which was my fucking favorite. I loved it mm-hmm. so much. So I did Southern Colorado first, um, like Snuff Mount Snuffles. I was a fourteener there. So I hiked that because I've heard about it for a really long time. And I just like the name because it's funny. Yeah. And it was beautiful. So you hike, you can go one of two ways up there. So I went the Blue Lakes way. Mm-hmm. And so you hike up and you can stay the night over there actually, which I highly recommend because it's really beautiful. And you get up to these crystal clear like mountain lakes and then you continue hiking up to some of the 14er or uh-huh. you can go drive around and do it the backside way. So I did both ways. Cool. And... It was amazing. So I went there first, and then I just continued to like Utah and Arizona, and did I? And then I came to California too. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> you gotta touch California every I time mean, you do it. If you're yes. gonna stay on this side of the country. Yeah, you have to come out here. I feel you on that. So there's this draw now. There's already like 
the fact that Encinitas and San Diego County are cool and then you've got mm-hmm. friends here but now there's this potential business opportunity to like mm-hmm. keep you fed for a while or whatever uh, if you do that what is the prognosis for van life do you think you'll stay in the van for a little while like how do you yeah. see how do you see that going and of course I'm not holding you to any of this <laughs> yeah don't hold me to any of it uh, yeah for sure I feel the same I don't want to pay rent I'm not ready to buy another place like I owned a place in Fort Collins and sold it and that's kind of what gave me the funds to do whatever I wanted to do so yeah I'm not ready to do any of that mm-hmm. but if I could have a business that I've always thought about in the back of my head with one of my best friends like it's kind of would be amazing and then I've also always wanted to just do well I've traveled my whole life obviously I love being on the road and I love being kind of remote and so if I could just work like one week every six weeks and then kind of have other people work for me as well that's ideal so I'd probably try to do that keep the van still travel as much as I want to or don't want to yeah and see what happens hell yeah that's the dream to have like yeah passive revenue and then exactly. also like a little bit more lucrative active revenue whenever you want it yeah and what's cool is i already have passive revenue right now and so if i could how's that well let me just tell you <laughs> it's fucking great okay who doesn't want residual income i do yeah get just, in on it i just don't do anything <laughs> <laughs> This right here is gonna bring it. Yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. I know how I always try to think about that. Like, how can I just do nothing and still make so much money? But you know what? I've pretty much been able to do that. So I'm figuring it out. I feel like it's working. I used to only work two days a week and three days a week doing hair. Yes, I dude. Made great money and I loved it. Great. I can, like, ooh, are you kidding? That's badass. It yeah. sounds like you should I do that now. Prefer not to work, thank but you. But just also be the owner of the thing. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Um, so it might happen. I've I've sort of always I've, my entire career I've sort of committed to being underemployed, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that if the job doesn't suit me, I don't feel bad like just stopping. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've never felt bad about that. Like I've never understood why people how people feel so like tied and responsible to a company Mm -hmm. like really they they don't really give a shit about you like you're replaceable right you know like nobody's gonna look out for you but you yeah just do what you want like live your life and figure it you know i don't know like i've just always like asked for what i wanted and demanded it and like if it didn't work out then i would just go somewhere else right you know um so this is my favorite question to ask people. Ooh, what is it? Uh, you're clearly close with your mom. She came out here to visit you while yes. you're in the van. Love my mom. Uh, and you you saved her from the day's end. <laughs> um, so she probably ought to like you. Uh-huh. Uh huh. For her and any other like close friends and family, like your inner circle and stuff. Yeah. What was the response to the van thing? Like, oh. It, Is it cool? Yeah. Or are you like some pariah weirdo? No, actually, they didn't care, but I think they're used to it. Because you've been on this trip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. Like, they, no reaction. Yeah. Cool. I'm happy for you. When Uh are you going to go? You know? And one of my friends was like, I'm actually surprised you didn't do this earlier. Yeah. And my mom is, my whole family are travelers. Mm -hmm. So they kind of get it too. They get that lifestyle. And I'm, I've always been a free spirit. And so, yeah, they kind of expect it. Like, all right, sweet. What are you gonna do next? Yeah, you know? cool. Yeah, so they're super supportive. That's super. And good. obviously, yeah, like they're all down to come visit, and they they love it. They love it all too. So very good. Yeah. Uh, have you done any off roading in your van? I know you uh, got a yeah. you got a bouncy rig, which mm-hmm. I do not have. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Although I think bit. my cabinets would fall off the wall if I bounced around too so, much. So here's the thing: <laughs> is my whole side panel on one of my doors completely fell off Uh oh. because sorry flipping van oh flipping van <laughs> oh no i know you didn't flipping really build vans. you didn't really build it <laughs> off-roading okay so yes i did a lot of off-roading in the beginning uh-huh. for sure 
and because I love it, of course, that's how you get to the beautiful places where nobody's at and you meet the coolest people there. Right. And so it's fine, but I can tell like the paneling, even like on the walls, it's kind of like popping out. It's on its places. way down. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like just stay. Just all stay up there, please. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's all in all, it's been pretty good. But there's definitely a couple things where I'm like, I need to either, I probably should go a little slower. On yeah. The back roads would help. Mm-hmm. But. It works. Cool. It sounds like you're inevitably going to hit the road one way or another, whether it's uh, next week or after you sort out your lease (laughs) with your with your place. Uh, Where are you gonna go? What's what's on your bucket list for for the van? So I want to go to Bishop. For Hell sure. yeah! I've heard I love that place so much about Bishop. I've been there. Well, uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me all the places. And Bishop and Mammoth for sure. Like yeah. I want to hit those hot springs and just kind of get back in the mountains. That was my plan anyway for the summer. I should have already been hiking as much as I can every day. But um, yeah, so there. And then originally I was gonna continue up to Oregon and Washington and just kind of hit all of those mountains on the way up. Yeah. And then circle back around to Colorado and then go south and east. Mm-hmm. But who knows now? So yeah. my immediate future, Bishop and Mammoth. Cool. Yeah. Good deal. And uh, you mentioned hiking a bunch mm-hmm. and backpacking you did in Colorado mm-hmm. at wh- Snuffle Mountain? Snuffles. Snuffles but Mountain. I, I didn't backpack there. Oh. But you, you know didn't where, stay overnight. I didn't on the, stay overnight. You did the whole thing in one day? No. Oh. I did. I walked. I hiked up to the saddle. Oh, the I see. I see. And then I drove around. And, and then, then I got hiked to the, the peak from way. there. Mm-hmm. I see you. Okay. Because yeah, I started too late. Right. I started at like three. P.M. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like, nah, shit. It is late. But do you know where I did backpack? That, that? everyone should go because it's so beautiful. The Four Pass Loop in Aspen. Mm. Have you ever heard of that? Been there? Nope. Snowmass, Aspen, Snowmass Lake. I've passed Aspen. It's, it's pretty awesome. I love it. I would go in August. Yeah. Green, wildflowers, beautiful. You can make it as long or as short as you want to. Very cool. Yeah, it's a good one. I've thought a bunch about backpacking since we talked about it a few days ago, mm-hmm. and I'd be scared to leave my van for two days at a trailhead, I Ooh, think. You know yeah. what I mean? I would I almost want to do it somewhere where... I had friends in town who could, I could leave my drop van there and they yeah. could just drop me off and I could leave my van at their house because yeah. all of my eggs are in one basket. I mean, you know what I mean? I know. I hear you. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Honestly, that's like my, yeah, I would probably wouldn't even care. I'd probably leave my doors open. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I would lock them. That's but. a good way to live, man. Yeah. I'm a little too trusting sometimes, mm-hmm. but I'd rather live that way than sure. the other way. Yeah. But I get it. My good buddy, actually, Scott, Scott's place that I'm staying at, he his trailer got broken into, like, the first month. Down here? Mm-hmm. Not here, but okay. I think he was camping somewhere. Uh, I can't remember where it's at. But they wiped it. They stole everything. They took everything. The toilet paper, like... Holy crap, all, like, Everything you can think of. Anything and everything. It's like, poor, sorry, Scotty. So I get it. That's a... That's probably a good thing to think about. That makes but me crazy. Also, Go ahead. I feel like at places like like at those trailheads, people are pretty cool. Like they're not gonna. I feel like that wouldn't happen either. Probably so. Yeah. I, and what I tell myself is that like, is it like, it's very unlikely to happen because it doesn't happen that often. And if you're adverse to every risk that's that large, you're never gonna do anything. Right. And then on the other hand. Everything in my van, and including my van, was gone. I'm still like relatively privileged, right? In in the spectrum of the yes. world, I'll fucking recover. For you know? sure. Yeah. I just as long as my dog's with me, I'm not going. Right. <laughs> I'm not going far <laughs> yeah. without him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I know. That's how I like to think about it too. Yeah. Like really, what's in there? That's that it's important. Just stuff. It's just stuff. Like you'll just replace it. I'm yeah. sure you have insurance on it too. You know, and then it's kind of fun. Like then you get to start over. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to get some renters insurance. <laughs> but I'm a fucking bad procrastinator. I actually don't have it either, but I have full coverage. Doesn't that count? On the van? 
Yeah, but it includes the things in it. Does it? Yeah. Cool. So I need to look that. into my policy. <laughs> I think I've got full coverage. Just I don't do know. That. Oh, I'm so irresponsible. You're so irresponsible. Um. Sorry, technical issue. Do it. Uh, let's see. What haven't we covered? What should we talk I about? Know. Allie? What do you want to ask me? Ask me anything. Um. Has anybody ever interviewed you? No. Let's I don't, do that. I don't think next so. Next time. I'll inter <laughs> You'll let's interview me. Roles, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, my buddy John pretended to be the host at the beginning. Uh huh. Uh, but then I ended up interviewing him. And he told me about his vasectomy, which is super fun. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's Every nice. man should have one. Um, <laughs> Every man should have one. I know. I'm just waiting for... <laughs> I got I to gotta figure out my uh, automotive policy and then get full health coverage. That's, yeah. Vasectomized. The, the top of the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, here. Here's a cool one. You mentioned... And I was going there before we got onto the hiking thing, which devolved into paranoia about our vans getting broken mm -hmm. into. Yeah. Uh, you're into hiking and backpacking. Yes. Um, and every time that I've seen you in the last couple of weeks, you've just got finished with yoga. Mm -hmm. You're clearly a pretty athletic person. What are your other outdoor things that you're doing when you're on the road? Ooh, well, surf. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on the season, right? Yeah. My mountain bike. I used to own a mountain bike. Sold it though recently. Kind of want to get a new one now. You got space for it in the van? I'd put a hitch on probably. Okay. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of a little fair weathered about it. Uh, I really only downhill. <laughs> you only downhill? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So I love downhilling at the resort. Lift serve. Ah. Yeah. Um, That's some Colorado shit. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Ooh, we gotta go. I've ridden up every hill I've ridden down. Okay. <laughs> You're missing out. I know, missing dude. Out, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so I love that. Mountain biking, snowboarding, skiing, whatever. Um, I recently started longboarding, surfing, hiking, yoga, anything. I mean, I would love to get into beach volleyball. I've always wanted to get into that. It would be super fun. That's kind of it. Yeah, you sound busy, dude. Yeah, anything. I'm open to it all. I just love being active outdoors. Cool. And I love adrenaline rushes, so mm -hmm. I love all the skydive, bungee. Oh, I actually don't know the answer to this question. <gasps> Where'd you grow up? Colorado. Golden. Okay. Golden, Colorado. Where's, Where's Golden? Where is it? Yeah. It's west of Denver and okay. south of Boulder. I think I've ridden my bike through there. I'll maybe. bet. Have you, did you go to the Coors tour? Coors to the tour? Coors Tour? Yeah. I did not Coors go to the Curry. Coors Tour. Is you this another thing that I'm missing? It. Yeah, you gotta hit it up. Okay. It's right on Clear Creek, the river. All right. Just go to the rib all the time. Uh -huh. Go get some Coors, some free beer. What brought you to California originally? Surfing, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, Me too. so, yeah. My ex and I learned how to surf, actually, and my sister. We all went to Costa Rica for three months, like 11 years ago now. 12 years or something and that was our goal just to learn how to surf that's all we did that's three we months is enough time three dude. months is enough time yeah Hell yeah so we learned and it was amazing and then my ex and i were like we want to we want to do this like we want to get better at it so we can have more fun with it and so we moved to california we packed up our car drove out where were you in costa rica so we started in dominical Okay. We spent like a lot of time there, mm -hmm. which is like the hardest place to learn how right. to surf because it's a heavy beach break. It's a little bit meaner, yeah. And the currents are like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I remember so many times paddling out and just like crying. I was yeah. like, just don't, just don't look back. Just keep paddling in. I've Literally. been there 15 years into surfing before. Yes. You know? <laughs> Right? Yeah. And I would start here and I'd literally be all the way down here. Yeah. And I can just imagine what like the locals were thinking, mm. everybody who knew how to surf was thinking, like they're probably just watching us and laughing so hard. Yeah. Yeah. It was horrible. And my sister's a really good swimmer and my ex Travis, he's a really good swimmer. And so they would be out, they would like make it out. And for some, I feel like I'm a good swimmer. Yeah. For some reason, I was always last. Uh -huh. I was like, God damn it. I would just see them out there and just keep paddling. You got it. <laughs> and then duck diving, you know, it takes a minute to yeah, like learn how to. For sure. 
all that stuff took a while to learn. Well, so. kudos to you for perseverance. Did you move somewhere that was a little bit more docile after Dominica? <laughs> no. No? No, you let's were like, see. let's go surf <laughs> a gnarly, like, it. big wave spot now. I know. We traveled all around. Uh -huh. We went all the way up the coast and across to the other side and then we went to Panama and whatever. And then we kept going back year after year mm -hmm. and found the southern parts, which are my favorite, mm -hmm. um, like Pavones and Mount Apollo. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, those, I mean, point breaks, let's be honest, are the easiest ever. Because sure. They're predictable. Yeah. You there's don't a, have there's to, a channel you, you can like drive this, around it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, once we found those, it was great. Yeah, cool. Did yeah. you did you land straight here when you came out from California? Yeah. So I packed up, we packed up my car and just, we were like, we don't know. We don't know where we want to go, but we know we want to be in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And so we just slept in the car for a couple weeks. Nice. We'd go like park in the neighborhoods kind yeah. of like I'm doing right now right and just be like all right we'll just sleep and then we'd shower at the gyms or whatever you know and we just drove up the coast starting from Ocean Beach and then we went all the way up to like San Clemente because we knew we didn't want to be past that sure and then we just loved Encinitas this like felt the best we're like all right we love it here like everybody was so nice kind of felt like Colorado vibes like everyone said hi to you on the street yeah. smiling just happy everyone's out and about and then it was like a series of events after that. We met um, Brent from Concept. Sure. And he Good was dude. like, yeah, he was like, go check out Virginia's place right next door. Like she usually, she might have a place Is for this you. the spot you're talking about now? Yeah, this cool. is Moonlight Beach Apartments. Yeah. And we were like, all right. We walked over there and sure enough, we ended up renting the little one bedroom right in the front that has like the chimney on it mm -hmm. and stayed there forever. What year is this? Oh gosh, I don't even know. 2012, uh, okay. somewhere in there. Cool. Yeah, we stayed there for a bit and then we moved and we like jumped around. It's actually really funny because <laughs> I feel like everyone that lived in those apartments like always just moved around. Yeah. And they all stayed like right there. Sure, sure, sure. And it was the best. It was the fucking best. We had so much fun. I feel like for the last decade at least, uh, because I've had four different residences, mm -hmm. brick and mortar residences yes. in, uh, in Sanitas. <laughs> and every one of them was like a word of mouth situation yes. because it's so excruciatingly expensive to live here yeah. that you sort of have to have like a little, a little bit of a trick up your sleeve. Absolutely. And so the people who already have it up their sleeve don't move until they find another one. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah, I know that's, yeah, I mean, that's how it worked out. We were in the Moonlight Apartments, and then we moved, like, literally right next door to a nicer one-bedroom, which I'm staying at right now. Right. And then Trav and I actually ended up splitting, and so we were like, hey, Scotty, can we, like, let's switch apartments. So we moved back into a studio apartment for uh -huh. a couple months to, like, get everything settled. Right. And then Scotty moved into the nice one-bedroom. Mm-hmm. And then, and that, and he stayed for the seven years that we've been gone. This is the dude your house sitting for now? Yeah. Okay. And then another buddy, another neighbor I just ran into the other day, he used to live in a one bedroom around the back. And he was like, hey, I'm in your guys' old studio, <laughs> which was Scotty's old studio, our old studio, and now he's in there. So yeah, it's funny. Musical apartments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. I love that you guys did that in the, in the vehicle. Uh, my friend Megan, uh, just bought a house last year in Boise yeah. and the first time that I ever had her on the podcast she was like yeah the reason I'm living in a van mm -hmm. is I'm shopping for a place to live yeah, I don't know exactly. where I want to live and I'm so jealous of you guys for like doing that few weeks tour of San Diego County because yeah. when I when I hit California I committed before I really saw oh, really? much yeah. And I ended up in like the Irvine, Costa Mesa, Newport Beach area. Oh no! Which for is school, too, but... Ugh, it's <laughs> terrible. I mean, the river jetties are a great surf spot, but that's about all it's got going for it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, and I, I ended know, up there for three you. and a half years for school and stuff, and so I wish I had done a little bit more due diligence, you know. I know, but there is a reason. I mean, you were there for school, so yeah, Did yeah, you yeah. Have really yeah. commuted from. It was fine, and Europe. it's it's the same thing as. Uh, 
it's the same thing as like having grown up in the south like i'm i wouldn't choose it for anybody else but i'm glad for it because yeah this privileged white boy needs a little adversity in his yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you can't appreciate what you've got unless you know what was worse than that, right? I know. Yeah. Uh, I know. It's so true. I know. I've had it so easy. I've had such a good life. Yeah. And I always try to, like, know that. Like, uh, I know that. Thank you. Like, thank you to whatever. Like, yeah. I'm so grateful. Because, yeah, not many people can say that, so. Yeah, it's a good time. Yep. Um, well, I think that's probably about it. Kay. Do you, you don't have a business quite yet mm -mm. to plug. Uh, Actually, I do. Okay. Yeah. Come with it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I work for th doTERRA. This is, oh, the, um. I work for a company called doTERRA. Okay. Sells, tell me about this. I'm going to tell you about it. I sell essential oils and plant-based products to people, individuals, small businesses. I help them incorporate and integrate it into their lives homes or businesses um, and yeah I just feel like there's a lot of like daily ailments that you can that can be soothed with essential oils mm -hmm. and there's a lot of like daily tasks that you have at your home or your business like cleaning and stuff that can be done with plant-based products and so those are the kind of areas that I focus on how do you spell this I don't know how to spell it d-o-t-e-r-r-a okay and it means gifts of the earth. Okay. So it's just plants. Yeah. It's awesome. And they just harness it. And I mean, you, do you know about essential oils and stuff? Not really. Not really. I mean, I, I've smelled them before. Yeah. You're basically, you're basically capturing like the essence of the plant. Yeah. And so they steam distill it or cold press it. Uh -huh. And then it's just like a very pure form of that and can be used for you know, health problems, or it can be used just for smells, or it can be used to, for mental health, to uplift you, help with anxiety, help you sleep, kind of whatever you want it for. If you don't even want to go down that route, you can just diffuse it in your home and have it smell amazing, or your yeah. van, I have a diffuser in my van actually that I, I love, but. Probably ought to do that, with you... Spin and me just like, farting all night, you know? <laughs> like, it probably isn't a bad idea to get a diffuser in there. You should. They're the best. I when we went on that walk the other day. Uh, you had, I think you had just come out of the yoga studio, and I was uh, studio. You gave me a hug, and I was like, "This woman smells better right now <laughs> than I do post shower." What the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> you gotta get on that essential oil game. Yeah, you know? dude. Uh, so, well, just from a functional like business That's perspective, funny. yeah. Uh, selling for them, how is that? How does that? Is there a synergy between that and the van? Are you selling it on the road or are you yeah. capable of doing that? What's the deal? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can kind of, it's basically you're running your own business mm -hmm. and you just have like this huge network behind you that backs you. So like doTERRA puts out all the information you'd ever need. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's up to you to kind of just like sift through that and sell it and share it like however you want to. Mm -hmm. So you can do that like through the internet through social media or you can find people like meet people on the road if they're interested in it you can help them with that or you can find whatever go to small businesses and yeah they sell in shops too. too yeah you can sell it in shops or like what I kind of want to start doing because I graduated with an interior design degree and in the back of my mind too like one day I think it would be really fun to open a boutique hotel somewhere in in Mexico really Puerto oh, yeah. Escondido is what I'm thinking but yeah so I love boutique hotels and just small cute really quaint places and so I'd love to kind of just like target and look those up wherever I'm at because mm -hmm. I love seeing them anyway and then see if they'd be interested in you know putting a diffuser in every room or whatever because how yeah. nice would that be you walk into the room and it just smells amazing that seems like a very good demographic for sure like yeah. a nice niche yeah for that it would be fun. So yeah, it's good. It works. Cool. You can do it however you want. Which is great. How long have you been doing that? I've been selling it for a few years, mm -hmm. but I've been using them since I was out here. One of my good friends actually, we used to trade haircuts for essential oils. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then she called me up a few years ago and was like, hey, do you want to do it as a business? I was like, sure, why not? So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Um, you got anything else to plug? What's your Instagram? 
Mom. You want people on your Instagram? Yeah, you can follow me. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, it's just Allie Rose, my name. So it's underscore, underscore, A L I R O S E, underscore, underscore. Cool. Yeah. Good deal. Well, thank you for sitting down with me. You're welcome. It's good chatting with you. Thanks for having uh, me. We'll have another conversation in your van, like June Lake or Lassen <gasps> yes. or some, some weird shit like that Let's at do some it. point. June Lake's on my list for sure. Yeah. Let's sit in the hot springs with my van in the background and Mammoth in the background. I like this idea. Is this is this when you interview me? You, yeah. Because yeah, I'm weird. Because I chose the setup already, so for sure. I'm weird in hot water. You are? So it'd be better if I'm being prompted as opposed to me being responsible for asking yes. you questions. Yes, okay, yeah, I'm gonna interview you then. Okay, sure. cool, good I know. deal. What's your thing about hot things? Why can't you handle hot, you can't ha handle hot yoga, too hot of weather, hot springs, hot water? I'm just a delicate flower. <laughs> <laughs> are you beginning you just, to interview me now? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is. You, just you know be, what else though? You, you don't even know be this. Like nurtured and taken care of. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you met Chris the other day. Yeah. Uh, he was telling me about like when he built the van out. He like stays in the van sometimes, even yeah. when it's parked in his like condo <laughs> driveway. Okay. And he, I love this. He calls it. He, he, Everybody, everybody who's lived in a van or stayed in a van can relate to the how cozy it feels and yes, stuff. He calls cozy. it the big hug, oh. which is so adorable. I think I that's the cutest that. shit I've heard. I love that so much. Um, that's how it does feel, though. Yeah, it does. Like, I actually miss my van. I love living in the apartment for the moment, uh -huh. but because it is so cozy. Yeah. It's like just your little space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before, when I was in a smaller van, it was even more of that effect because yeah. it was so small, but yep. it couldn't stand up and stuff. And so that was. I feel ya. Um, that. Yeah. And, yep. Uh, wait, what was I going to say? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I can't handle um, hot food. I love food. You could give me food about as spicy as it comes, and I like it. But like physically hot food, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. Oh, phys yeah, weird. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sweating right now. Do you, <laughs> do you know about Ayurveda? No. The old like traditional way of looking at the body and food and medicine and whatever. It's like a lifestyle, way of life. Holism scares me. Okay. I'm kidding. We'll talk about Tell that. Me. <laughs> we'll get into this when I interview you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to be psychoanalyzed. You're going to fix me, I think, in a hot tub. Yes, I am. <laughs> By the Wonderful. end of the interview, you'll be like, all right, I'm cured. Perfect. Fly away. <laughs> cool. Um, thank you for doing this. All right, you're welcome. I got to pee. Good. Sounds good. <laughs> all right, people. We did it. That was episode 66 of From the Van featuring Allie Rose. We had a good conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, I burnt the hell out of myself the other day. And maybe we'll rub some essential oils on it and see if that fixes things. Who knows? Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you're still hanging on this far, I don't know why you tolerate me. But it's cool that you do. Uh, there's going to be another episode next week featuring Moxie and Loon, uh, whose shirt I am seemingly always wearing. Uh, and that will be fun. You should tune back in for that for episode 67 of From the Van. <laughs>